Hey, what's up guys? Jack here and today we're going over some of the annoyances of BF1. I'm having a lot of fun with the game but naturally there are still some things I would change and tweak here and there to overall make the game experience a bit more pleasant, let's say. So I'm going to offer those up with some suggestions on how to change them. Before we dive into the nitty gritty, all of this is just my opinion based off playing the game on PC. Not all of you will agree with me and that's fine, your opinion is just as valid as mine is. Also, I don't have any console experience with the game so the current meta may differ there but you tell me if you think I'm right or wrong. I do play with a lot of friends and community members though and most of them would probably agree with my following sentence sentiments based off the discussions that we've had together. And finally, just because I'm a YouTuber with a big audience doesn't mean that DICE will listen to me and instantly scramble to change the game to my preferred preferences. I'm just lucky enough to have a big audience and I've seen a few people online assuming that DICE only listen to big Battlefield YouTubers and change the game accordingly, but that simply isn't the case and it's not true. They grab their feedback from a massive pool of Battlefield players on Reddit, BF forums, Twitter, Simthic, they run their own internal playtests and feedback sessions and ultimately DICE themselves are the men and women making this game. They decide as a team what changes are made and what things are added to the game. And as far as I'm concerned I don't have any personal influence on them at all. I'm just making a video here that anyone else could make based off my experiences with the game. And they're always looking for constructive feedback so let's get stuck in then. I'm going to start with gas and I'd say that this is a pretty hot topic right now. Some people like it as it is, but I'd say that most people I speak to agree that it definitely needs a change. The point of a gas grenade is to deny the enemy team access to an area or to force an enemy out and they either need to put their gas mask on stopping them from using aim down the site or they're going to have to move or die. I don't mind that as a mechanic, but the main issue I have is just the amount of gas grenades available and the amount that you see currently in game. Each player can equip two of them by default and I I think that's what the main issue is here. Some maps highlight the problems more than others, like Argon Forest on Conquest or Operations for example, that's just constant gas from my experience. Now you could argue, well just put your gas mask on, that's what it's for, and of course that's true, but there's a difference between putting your gas mask on from time to time to constantly having to wear it. Sometimes on Argon, if you're using the shotgun for example, there isn't much point in taking it off at all. And that to me says that it moves from being a game mechanic that's designed to be effective at certain times or tactical to use to something far more annoying that actually breaks the flow of gameplay. There are some other issues with gas as well. For instance, it does damage through solid walls, which really it shouldn't. You can throw it in a room and you can die from your own gas grenade through the wall. Not fun. And then we've got the initial gas damage, which is very high. If a gas grenade lands at your feet, you've often lost 30 to 40 health before your gas mask was fully on. And then of course, you've got the problem of spawning in on a teammate when he's in a gas grenade wearing his gas mask and you instantly take damage or getting revived into a gas grenade or doing massive damage to you before you can do anything about it. It doesn't seem very fair. So how would I change this? Well, I would balance it like this give only one gas grenade by default, or even better, perhaps think about giving it to just a support class, but also reduce the radius of the gas and stop it doing damage through walls. I think it would be cool if gas had a tiered damage system, so if you just brush past the corner of the gas, maybe it wouldn't do as much damage as if you ran through a gas grenade fully or went into the center of it, and that would mean that you only get penalized if you run through a gas cloud rather than just touching the edge of it and losing 20 to 30 health instantly. Moving on, and I think this goes without saying, but the shotgun, the Model 10A Hunter. I've got no doubt that DICE are already fully aware of this thing, and I imagine that in the next patch it will get looked at. I hope so anyway. I think it's crazy right now the damage that this thing can do at ranges. It can one-shot enemies from insane ranges. I mean, look at this footage now. I've just recorded this in a server with a friend, and I'm one-hit killing him on 100 HP from a range that just looks ridiculous to me. I'm totally on board with the fact that shotguns are close, like really close range, should be a one hit kill, but at a distance like this in a video game, I think that just looks and feels a bit too far away for me for a one hit kill with a shotgun. Just way beyond what I would expect from a shotgun in a multiplayer FPS, and as such, lots of people are using it. Argon Forest has become known as Shotgun Forest because it's the perfect map to use the Hunter for maximum effect. In my opinion, the range needs nerfing on it, it definitely needs looking into, and hopefully the next patch will bring that. 
Next, operations. I've got an idea for it. In the first patch, we saw an increase in tickets for operations to help the attackers. Instead of having 150 tickets, they've now got 200 and 250, depending on the operation size. So the games are tending to go on a lot longer now, maybe a bit too long. And I personally believe that we see the behemoths too frequently in operations as well. If the attackers lose the first attack, they get a behemoth lose again and they'll get another one. And this can be a very frustrating, annoying experience for the defenders if you're playing on a team that don't really know how to take it out, you just get dominated by it. Yes, I think that will improve as the game goes on and people learn how to play it, but at the moment it's pretty hellish. So how about this instead? You start with 150 tickets, then if the attackers lose, they're given an increased ticket count on the second try and then only on the third and final attempt, they're given the behemoth. I'd be really interested to see if anyone agrees with this or if people just like it the way it is and don't have a problem with the behemoths. Either way, it's a small thing that I thought I'd bring up and talk about. So how about anti-air now, another hot topic. This got a small damage reduction in the first patch, but I do think that the range needs reducing as well a bit more. The main issue I find with the anti-air isn't so much single AAs on their own, it's on maps with multiple AAs in a small area that can target one plane, or they're spread out in such a way that they can literally cover the entire map. Let's say Monte Grappa on Conquest. There are at times 2-3 to three anti airs that can target one plane at a time, which I think sometimes makes the AAs feel stronger than they actually are. If you were to give them a small range reduction, I think that could help balance them a little bit better. Clearly we don't want planes being ineffective and we don't want them to rule the skies either so there's got to be a balance. And having used the attack plane properly for the first time the other day and actually practiced with it a bit, I was quite amazed at how much splash damage the main cannon had on the default package. You didn't actually have to be super accurate with it to get kills, way more effective than I realised and there are some videos I've seen of people who would consider themselves very good pilots and they can absolutely dominate with those things. Even still though, from time to time, you do hear those excellent pilots complaining about how good the anti-air is. Moving on, there's a small bug in the game that bugs me, and it's to do with the horses, the hitboxes. I'm sure you've experienced a cavalry class charging towards you on his horse and then you die, seemingly before they actually get to you. I'm not sure if this is the horse hitbox being overly generous, or it's some form of lag compensation, but it's incredibly frustrating when you feel as though you've got enough time to move, but you get killed before the horse is really anywhere near you on your screen. I'd like to see that looked into. Another hitbox issue I found is that when people are vaulting or hoisting themselves over a wall, and hitboxes in Battlefield games since BF3 introduced the vaulting or the jumping over objects and then we had it in BF4, they've always been a bit off and finicky. And in BF1 with the whole hoisting yourself over the wall system, I've had a lot of experiences where I'm shooting at someone doing that and I'm just getting zero bullet reg, so hopefully that can be looked into as well. And lastly, for the main balance tweaks I'd like to see in the game, spawns. I feel as though the spawning system could be a lot better than it currently is. Firstly, the spawning around flags. It's always puzzled me why we can't have a smarter spawning system in a Battlefield game. So say for example, I want to spawn on the sea flag on Empire's Edge. Why can't the game go, well, we've got 12 spawns for that flag, six of them have enemies near, I'm going to put you at one of the other six, maybe. Perhaps it does that already, maybe I'm being ignorant, but it doesn't seem that way because of the amount of times that you spawn in front of or behind enemies on a flag. It seems to happen a lot more on the open maps, like let's say Sinai Desert. It doesn't feel quite right to me. I think the spawns themselves could be a bit better too, in more cover, and the system could benefit from being a bit smarter if it isn't already. And I know it is incredibly difficult to make intelligent systems like this, but ideally I'd like to see an improvement there. Also, I'm sure you've experienced players spawning on dead teammates. Really annoying. You'll kill someone, turn around and think, okay, no one else is going to spawn there. And then maybe one or maybe even two seconds later, a player in his squad will spawn right behind their dead body. I'm not sure what causes this. Maybe a player spawning in as his teammate dies, but that definitely needs fixing unless it's been implemented as a feature. But if it is a feature, then I'm not really on board with it. I think if your teammate's dead then the spawn should just cancel. There are some other things of course that need addressing and hopefully will be in the next patch. The progress bar for instance when you rank up still doesn't work properly and the medal system that was fixed in the last patch still isn't quite working as intended and definitely needs some inspiration. Sometimes people's medals just switch up to past or present medals making it quite frustrating for those that love to work towards them. 
Also, spawning in the game as a tank driver or a pilot or a horse and not getting the tank or the plane or the horse is, well, that's quite infuriating because then you've got a long way to run and you don't have the thing that you selected. I'm not sure if you've had this, but I've clicked on a tank at the start of a round and I've spawned into the game as a tank driver or a pilot with no plane or a cavalry guy without a horse. And that's quite important. You kind of need those. Not the best way to kick off a game of Battlefield. And this is something that I believe DICE are already aware of. So hopefully again with the next patch, hopefully that's coming soon in December, should rectify this. And that's all for today, folks. I am very interested in knowing your opinion down below in the comments. Have you shared these experiences and are they annoying enough for you to want to change them? If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, a thumbs down. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.